Eh, let's try this again. This week, I can officially announce the end of the teen vaping epidemic in the United States. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy and News for the week ending 22nd July 2022. Published in the vapingtoday.com, in their science section, we find the end of the vaping epidemic in the United States. To celebrate, scientific paper confirms that the current U.S. federal data shows the end of the nicotine vaping epidemic and the near eradication of teen smoking. Professors Ricardo Pelosa, founder of Cohere at the University of Katina, Thomas B. Casal of the University of Florida, and Donald P. Tashkin of UCLA Health Sciences in Los Angeles, published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, a closer look at teen and youth vaping in the United States, where they discuss the magnitude of the problem and the real health implications among teens who use these consumer products. Its goal is to provide up-to-date information on vaping trends among adolescents and youth adults in the United States, and to assess the impact of vaping on respiratory health. Quote, tobacco eradication is in sight. Oh, what a fantastic news announcement. The end of smoking in the United States. Can the news get any better than that? Other findings. Interestingly, the proportion of dual users has decreased in recent years, according to federal surveys. NHIS 2019 shows 23% dual use. Meanwhile, the National Youth Tobacco Survey 2021 shows 12.5% dual use. This is likely due to several factors. As technologies improve over time, it is likely that more users will find that vaping alone is a satisfying alternative to smoking. The authors explain that dual use should be properly understood as part of the behavioral pathway that evolves over time, not as something static and fixed. Vaping can start with no intention of quitting, but as the user becomes more familiar and finds a product that they like, they gradually use the product more in more situations. I wholeheartedly agree. Vaping technology has improved exponentially since the day that I found vaping. When I quit, I needed a big box mod for direct lung experience to make smoking obsolete for me. Here we are today, and let me tell you about the Oxva Origin SE. This tiny all-in-one device is priced comparable to disposable devices and produces a fantastic vaping experience that supersedes what I use to actually quit smoking. I know this thing is so good, anybody can pick this thing up and quit smoking on the same day. So my advice is, if you want to keep smoking, don't go buy the Oxva SE, because you'll find out you ended up quitting your smoking addiction without even trying or wanting to. Moving on. Unbelievable. Such a tiny little device. But a real vape. Successful quitting requires being able to choose. In order for smokers to quit successfully, they need to have options available and be able to choose the method or form that works best for them. As consumers, we often underestimate the great power that we have in our hands. Our everyday spending decisions have a profound effect on the economy. People know what is best for themselves more than anyone else, especially the government. When Nokia, BlackBerry, Kodak, and MySpace went bankrupt, it was because consumers decided that their products weren't good enough anymore, not because of regulations or bans. Innovation and the choices it offers change the world more 
than any government agency. Unfortunately, this fact is often overlooked in political debates about smoking cessation. According to the World Health Organization, every year more than 8 million people die directly or indirectly from tobacco, which kills almost half of its users. This is totally unacceptable. However, most people cannot quit immediately. Quitting smoking is one of the hardest things to do. More than 9 out of 10 smokers are unable to quit without help. Therefore, making a wide variety of smoking cessation aids available to people is the most effective way to beat smoking. Consumers must be able to choose what best suits their needs since each person is unique. And therefore, applying the same solution for all of them is not an effective measure. It turns out that vaping is one of the most effective tools to quit smoking. It allows smokers to replace their smoking habit with a much less harmful one. Vaping is less harmful, 95% less harmful than traditional cigarettes. And according to the Queen Mary University study, vaping is twice as effective at smoking cessation as nicotine replacement therapy. A vital element for the success of quitting smoking through vaping is precisely the fact that there are countless models and variations of devices and liquids for vaping. Instead of regulatory bans, what we need is to keep as many options as possible available to people who want to quit. I'd go even further to say, if government would simply get out of the way, science has already proven smokers who vape daily quit smoking even if they have absolutely no plans to quit whatsoever. If vaping were ineffective as prescription medications for smoking cessation, vaping would have gone the way of Nokia, Blackberry, Kodak, and MySpace. But instead, vaping is still growing all around the world. Why? Because it obviously works. And let us not forget this. Electronic cigarettes are less harmful than conventional ones, says doctors in favor of regulation in the Philippines. The Philippines has become a new example of e-cigarette regulation with a public health focus. Although many doctors are in favor of this law, others continue to resist it. Oral and maxillofacial surgeon Ferdinando Fernandez explains the impact of these professionals who ignore science putting political interests above the hypocritic oath. It is unfortunate that some members of the medical society make this a political issue. Let's all be professionals and focus on scientific discourse. In recent years, science has shown that electronic cigarettes are less harmful than conventional ones. The logical conclusion is that vapor products will save the lives of 16 million Filipino smokers, or at a minimum, reduce their health risks. Therefore, a key is regulation and not prohibition. This is what the bill on vaping is intended to do. It is clearly a victory, a great victory for public health. Those who want to ban vaping may be indirectly supporting smoking, and we don't want that. All of us in the medical community are united in our fight against smoking and to see the tobacco epidemic end forever. Therefore, the government should regulate, not ban, alternatives to cigarettes that have been shown to be much less harmful. Whether it's a nicotine patch, nicotine gum, nicotine vapor product, or heated tobacco products. So how much safer is nicotine patches, gums, and vapor products? According to the Royal Society for Public Health, nicotine no more harmful to health than caffeine. RSPH is calling for public confusion over nicotine to be addressed as a way of encouraging smokers to use safer forms of the substance. Tobacco contains nicotine along with many other chemicals, but nicotine by itself is fairly harmless. It is blatantly obvious the only reason nicotine has been so harmful to previous generations is because of the byproducts of combustion. Tar, arsenic, and over 7,000 chemicals created through the process of combustion are cancer-slash-disease-causing substances and the direct byproduct of burning 
cigarettes. Nicotine vaping does not combust anything. Yes, there are flavoring agents in them, which can cause some harm to users. But the harm is less than 5% of those resulting from lighting up a single cigarette. That's just simple logic. So, why don't we stop beating a dead horse and move over to some news from bluehole.com.cn. The tide of electronic cigarettes is going overseas, from manufacturing exports to brand exports. The industry has become polarized. Earlier on June 15th, the official website of the State Tobacco Monopoly Administration announced that the National Unified Electronic Cigarette Transaction Management Platform was officially launched. The e-cigarettes implement one item, one code, and e-cigarette companies that have not obtained a license will not be allowed to trade through the e-cigarette trading platforms. At the same time, the new version of the Administrative Measures for Electronic Cigarettes removes the requirement that exporting e-cigarette enterprises need to obtain a license for tobacco monopoly production enterprises. Did you get that? The new regulations remove the requirement for exporting electronic cigarette businesses to get a license from the Tobacco Monopoly Administration. So this means, in my previous live announcement, that Smore International, small, getting a license, as well as another 25 companies that have attained e-cigarette production licenses. And the fact that Relics and UL are on the list are kind of a moot point, unless you live in China. At present, 125 e-cigarette companies have obtained production licenses, including eight domestic e-cigarette companies. However, that's great news for all of us vapors to know. Companies like S'more, UL, Smock, Vupu, Fogcore, Relics, and others make products for both the domestic and the export markets. These licenses ensure product development is going to continue unabated. And any lessons learned from either the domestic or the export market can then be incorporated as improvements for the other market share. Despite the FDA regulations basically killing product innovation in the United States, rest assured knowing that these companies' product improvements are going to continue unabated. And speaking of regulations, Canadian government develops new regulations for e-cigarettes, requiring manufacturers to provide relevant health information. Currently, Health Canada has only limited information on vaping product sales and their ingredients making it impossible to properly track market trends. Carolyn Bennett, Minister of Mental Health and Addiction and Deputy Health Minister of Canada, announced a 45-day public consultation period that will inform the development of new vaping product reporting regulations. This will mean the manufacturers of vaping products must disclose information on their sales and ingredients to Health Canada, which will help the Canadian government's efforts to maintain market transparency and keep pace with the growing vaping market. You know what? Since transparency is always a good thing, that is some awesome news. Unlike what's going on in Malaysia, Malaysian cabinet has approved tobacco and smoking control bill, banned sales to post 2005 population. Among other things, the bill calls for a ban on the sale of cigarettes, tobacco, and vaping products to people born after 2005. The proposed law is modeled on New Zealand's legislation which was unveiled in December 2021, a plan to gradually increase the smoking age to cover the entire population and phase out smoking. Folks, I do not think that this is a good idea. It is essentially a rolling prohibition, and we all know prohibition does not work. It also completely ignores the beneficial effects of daily nicotine usage. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. The beneficial effects of daily nicotine usage. Nicotine in Alzheimer's. They found that nicotine prevents aggregation of beta amyloid, 
a protein that forms damaging plaques in Alzheimer's patients' brain. Back in 1996, Science.org published the findings for Michael Zagorski, a biochemist at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. He and his colleagues were looking for a biochemical mechanism to explain why smokers appear to have a lower incidence of Alzheimer's. Okay, okay. 1996, I get it. You want something newer. All right. Nicotine treatment of mild cognitive impairment. A six-month, double-blind, pilot clinical trial published in Neurology found this study demonstrated that transdermal nicotine can be safely administered to non-smoking subjects with mild cognitive impairment over six months with improvement in primary and secondary cognitive measures of attention, memory, and mental processing, but not in ratings of clinical-rated global impressions. We conclude that this initial study provides evidence for nicotine-induced cognitive improvement in subjects with mild cognitive impairment. However, whether these effects are clinically important will require larger studies. So in other words, daily nicotine usage safely improves mild cognitive impairment. And these scientists want more money to do bigger studies to prove that what they already proved. And to show that daily usage of nicotine is a good thing for people with mild cognitive impairment. And is a good thing with people that have a propensity for Alzheimer's. And a good thing for how many other potential health impairments? So, my question is, are these prohibitionist agendas going to result in the greater number of those suffering from Alzheimer's? Is mild cognitive impairment going to become a bigger problem in countries who ban recreational nicotine usage? Are people instinctively self-medicating themselves with one of the most abundant sources of natural medicine on the planet, white potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, bell peppers, cayenne pepper, paprika, and any nightshade plant contains nicotine. It's not just in tobacco, folks. Do we instinctively crave chips or french fries because of the calories or because of the nicotine? Does Italy have such lower cardiovascular incidence because of beta carotene and polyphenols? Or is it because of the nicotine? Do Hungarians eating lecho and paprika regularly also gain any benefits of the extra nicotine that's in their diet from these foods? We know the benefits of nicotine. And we know that electronic cigarettes are at least twice as effective to quit smoking than any other NRT. So, why the war on vaping? And that's exactly the question in the next article. GP, e-cigarettes help smokers quit. Why war on e-cigarettes? Dr. Garrett McGovern, a general practitioner specializing in addiction medicine at the Priority Medical Clinic in Dundrum, Ireland, recently wrote an article about e-cigarettes. He argued that banning e-cigarette flavors would increase the harm and death of smoking and would not protect young people. Yet the Irish Joint Commission ignores science and recommends banning all flavors except tobacco and e-cigarettes. Banning flavors will not change youth experimentation, but it will prevent millions of smokers from trying the most effective technology innovation to end smoking and ultimately saving their lives. Link in the description below if you want to learn more. Meanwhile, in the UK, warning to smokers over danger of heat wave. The UK has seen temperatures as high as 40 degrees Celsius in the past week. That's 140 degrees Fahrenheit for you Imperial US folks. And you know what? I'm going to disagree with this Wales Online article. It's not about fully extinguishing your cigarette butts before you toss it in the bin. If you smoke 
the best thing that you can do is pick up a vape to stop lighting tobacco on fire. There is no combustion with vaping. And if you completely switch, I guarantee you, you will improve your health outcome. Moving on. Mumbai police seized e-cigarettes, vaping devices, being sold to students. Notice how they only care about students. Forget that there are five to ten times more adults in society. Only focus on the kids that are already breaking the law. Whoops. They don't mention that fact. If someone is already breaking the law, let me ask you a simple question. Will more laws ever change? What criminals are already doing? Do more laws change criminal behavior? Of course not. New laws will only affect law-abiding adults and never in a beneficial manner. Yet despite that, Mumbai police seized e-cigarettes, vaping devices, flavored hookah tobacco, e-cigarette refills, which are being supplied to school and college students. Raids were conducted at 12 places and 11 people were arrested. And I'd be willing to bet that as soon as those 11 people were arrested and tossed in the slammer, at least 22 new criminals took their place and kept illegally selling to the exact same kids. The economics of drug war apply to any product that consumers demand. Some Auckland dairy owners find way to get around regulations restricting vaping products. Listen, if you've been following the news, New Zealand restricted flavored vaping products to specialized vape shops and only allows dairies to carry three flavors, tobacco, mint, and menthol. So what did the dairy industry do when the government instituted prohibition of one of their biggest cash crops? Very simple. They partitioned off their store and created a specialty vape shop to keep selling their products. So now the question is, is it a dairy or is it a vape store? The lines are a little blurry with dairies that have converted parts of their business into selling vaping products. There is a plentiful array of nicotine-based flavor choices for sale, many more than the three flavor options under Ministry of Health rules. Well, of course dairies are going to skirt the law and keep selling what their customers want. Are you stupid or something? It's fundamental economics. Spend a couple thousand dollars, and I guarantee you can make millions. The more restrictive the laws, the higher the financial motivation to keep selling. The only ones losing out with all these additional laws are the consumers who now have to pay more for the exact same thing. Are you stupid or something? Just like the author of this debunked latest scare story, expert warns vape users of serious risk of popcorn lung that can be fatal. Is this 2015 or 2022? What? An unnamed expert has warned of the extreme risks linked to developing popcorn lung linked from vaping. So, are you going to claim an expert who shall remain nameless as shall remain anonymous, warns of impending death to vapors. Yeah, kind of loses all credibility if your expert can't be verified as being an expert because he's such an expert, you won't tell us who he is. 
or what university it is or what health organization it is. And in my opinion, this kind of looks like just a bunch of paid for propaganda to keep misinforming the public. So let's jump to Lifehacker, who says, Jules weren't real vaping anyway. There has never been a better time to switch to grown-up vaping. What a wonderful, refreshing article from Lifehacker. Although, you couldn't tell if you read the comments from all the misinformed public that is out there. This article covers why vapors and smokers should switch to an open vaping system. What exactly is vaping? The intimidation of vape culture. How to choose your first vaping device. The difference between e-juice and nicotine salts. Choosing the right vape juice or nicotine salts for you. Next comes, let's get to vaping. And then finishes off with basic vape maintenance, cleaning, coils, and batteries. Yet the misinformed public goes and bashes this author in the comments. If there was ever an article which needs the vaping community to chime in, this is it. So please, 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 if you are watching this video, jump to the article linked in the description below and go throw your two cents in. Vaping saved my life, and I will be leaving comments to correct the torrid, rampant misinformation left by the public. So please, go be an advocate and leave your comments to this or any other article that has people leaving misinformation out there because the article is 100% accurate. But the public's comments are nothing but misinformation. Well, that wraps up the Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy and News for the week ending July 22nd, 2022. Once again, there were so many other articles I could have included in this report, like how Ukraine is gathering up and using spent disposable vapes to power their drones. But you know what? I suspect if you've been watching this video from the beginning till now, you already knew about that. However, I do truly appreciate every single one of you for subscribing and watching this weekly report. Don't forget to hit the like or dislike button. Let me know what you guys think of this. I got to travel to Cleveland this weekend to fix a sump pump for my mother. But rest assured, I will be doing a live show Monday evening, as well as the usual Tuesday noon live mixing and chilling with Hunky Vape. So until then... Please be good to each other. And my wish is always peace, love, and a hunky vape to end cigarette combustion. Have a great day.